Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So, unless you've been living under a rock, you've noticed that over the past eight years or so, the NRA has hit a pretty big slump. Not just because every politician and activist out there blames them for absolutely everything, but also their potential members and current members, people that have been leaving the organization. They don't like the way that Wayne LaPierre runs it. They see that he's kind of running it into the ground. And there's a lot of accusations that people say that they're a compromise organization, right? They, they like to compromise a lot. And so people have been moving over to places like GOA, FPC, uh, the Second Amendment Foundation, who seem to be more no compromise type organizations. And so that's been an issue for the NRA. So to my surprise, I had a friend come to me today and say, hey, did you hear about uh, Second Amendment Foundation? They hired on Chris Cox, who used to be the head of the NRA ILA. Uh, he was actually there for, I think, almost 20 years. And uh, the Second Amendment Foundation has now taken him on. What do you think about that? And I was shocked. I did not know what to think about that, but I hadn't done my research. So I did my research, found out exactly what's going on. I want to talk to you guys about it today. So let's get started. This channel is proud to be sponsored by SDI, Sonoran Desert Institute. Have you ever wanted to learn more about gunsmithing, firearms repair, or shooting sports management? Enroll in one of SDI's online programs or courses to take your hobby to the next level. Payment plans and funding options are available, so visit the link below or call 480-999-4767 to learn more. So let me just state right off the bat that I'm not a huge fan of Chris Cox. Uh, during his tenure at the NRA ILA, I felt like that legislative arm was just too compromise. There was way too much compromise going on and that's kind of what pushed me into the direction of a lot of these no compromise organizations. So I felt while he was there a lot of the decisions that they made had me scratching my head and some of them to me actually felt negative rather than positive. So again I moved away from that organization and onto others and that's why I was so surprised when my friend said that they had brought him on. Well it turns out they didn't really bring him on. Uh, Chris Cox left the NRA back in 2019. He started his own organization, Cap6, and uh, it turns out that the Second Amendment Foundation is actually going to be working with that Cap6 organization and taking advantage of really the networking that Chris Cox has gained throughout the years. And that you know, there's no way to argue that that's actually beneficial. So basically what we have here is uh, Chris Cox has worked in the Second Amendment space for a long time. He's made some really good connections. He knows a lot of people. He knows a lot of legislators. Uh, he knows how to, you know, get in touch with people and make things happen. That's just a fact. And so the uh, Second Amendment Foundation has basically hired on his group as an advisor. So they're going to be filling more of an advisory role. And again, they'll be able to use their connections to get more stuff done. So uh, Adam Kraut, who is the executive director of the Second Amendment Foundation, actually said this uh, in a statement about bringing that group on. So Adam Kraut says this, we're bringing Cap6 on board in an advisory capacity on a number of different projects. SAF has been the nation's leading force in the Second Amendment litigation world. As we look towards the future, I am humbled and excited to have another major influence in the Second Amendment sphere, along with his talented team available as a resource to help me implement my ideas and shape SAF's trajectory for the next 50 years. So you can see there that they brought him on with an advisory role. Now they, they did that in order to increase resources, increase connections and networking and all that stuff. And that's fantastic. Now, Adam Kraut is somebody who I absolutely trust. I know that that guy's sole focus, his sole focus is protecting people's civil rights. That is pretty much what he does from morning until night. You guys might remember he had a small segment uh, here on YouTube where he used to do uh, two-way stuff and talk about litigation and law. And he was always very clear and concise. And that's pretty much what his life has been. So when it comes to his judgment, I don't really question his judgment. If he says this is a good thing, I believe him. I believe that his intentions are good. I just hope that after leaving the NRA ILA, that Chris Cox is more no compromise than he used to be. I understand sometimes in order just to get something across the finish line, sometimes there needs to be compromise, but a lot of ways that they compromised in the past really just, I mean, they gave up some of our rights. I mean, just overall gave up some of our rights. And sometimes they just let things go because they just didn't want to fight it because they felt like they would lose more if they decided to fight it than let it go. And so, I had a lot of problems with the ILA in the past, a lot of problems with a lot of the stuff they did. So for me, it's kind of sketchy to see a great organization like the 2AF uh, get connected with an organization that is run 
by Chris Cox. So for me, it's kind of hard to get over that one. But again, I just kind of lean on the fact that this is a decision by Adam Kraut, who again, I know is a good guy who is there, you know, just looking out for our best interests. And maybe the fact that they've joined forces, right, at these two big organizations, then we will see more resources being put towards no compromise type uh, litigation. So I, I'm, while I'm a little bit nervous, uh, you know, and somewhat skeptical, I'm still hopeful. And I'm hoping that, again, these two organizations will come together. And uh, even though it's in an advisory role, he still mentioned that it's something that they'll hope will shape the SF, uh, SAF, excuse me, for the next 50 years. So obviously the role is going to be big, right? It's going to it's going to maybe move them into the next level into the future. And, you know, even though I, I don't like the whole compromise thing, uh, Chris Cox does have a lot of experience. He has a lot of experience. He knows a lot of people. And maybe we'll see some good come out of this. So I'm just, I'm going to try and hold off judgment at this point to wait and see what happens in the future. And if we keep seeing, you know, the same thing that we've been seeing out of the SAF, which is basically a just must win mentality. And they're, I'm telling you, they're a great organization who's done a lot of good. They're, they've been pretty much at the forefront of everything good that we have seen happen. So again, GOA, FPC, 2AF, uh, you know, all these guys are doing a fantastic job uh, filling in all of these gaps that, you know, used to just be let go because, you know, one organization couldn't cover everything. So, um, you know, cautiously optimistic to see what happens here. But again, they're, they're working together through what they say is an advisory role. It's not like he's been hired on as an executive or vice director or anything like that. He doesn't actually work with or within the 2AF. He's just working with his company and now his company's working with the 2AF. So for anybody out there that had heard the same thing that was wondering what was going on, that's basically what's going on. And I will put a link down below to a, a much more detailed article about this. So if you want to read a little bit more about it, you can. Anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.